Okay, so we're talking about fins and what we're going to be doing in this uh, segment is we're going to be coming up with the fin equation uh, which enables us to uh, start to calculate or start the process of calculating the amount of heat removed from a surface. So I'll begin by drawing out a schematic of a fin which will be the basis for our derivation. Okay, so there is the schematic for the representation of the fin that we are going to be taking a look at. And uh, this fin uh, theoretically could have tapers, so the area of it could get uh, smaller or larger as we move in the x direction. And what I've done is I've sketched out a little uh, differential element of the fin, and that is written over on the side here. And a couple of things, uh, we're going to assume that conduction is in the x direction only. And the other thing that we're going to assume is that we have convective cooling from the external surface of the fin. So when we look at fins, we refer to a fin as being a conductive convective system. And the reason is because we have conduction going through uh, our little differential element or through the fin. And we also have convective heat transfer that is taking place to the surrounding environment. And consequently, there is going to be a difference between uh, Q of X in and Q of X leaving. And the difference is going to be related to the amount of convective heat transfer coming off of the fin. And that will be the basis by which we will come up with our relationship. Uh, one other thing that I should point out here is that we have two different areas that we have shown in this schematic. We have the cross-sectional area of our fin as we move out. And then we have the wetted surface area. So that is the area around the perimeter of the fin where convective heat transfer is taking place. And so don't get those two areas confused. They are different and, and just be aware of that. And so what we're going to do, uh, we're going to use this schematic to derive what we call the fin equation. And so we're going to consider the little finite or differential element. And we saw that Qx was coming in and what was leaving was Qx plus dx plus differential amount due to convective heat transfer. So that kind of gives us the basis of an energy balance for that differential element. And now for conduction, we're going to use Fourier's law. And we're also going to use the Taylor series expansion, which we saw earlier when we came up with the heat diffusion equation. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take uh, what we have here from Fourier's law and I'm going to make substitutions into our Taylor series expansion. And then with this term here I'm going to use the chain rule. So that's what we'll be doing with the uh, conduction term. And for the convection term, So we have that. And looking back at our schematic, one other thing is, I didn't mention this, but we've assigned a temperature T that pertains to the temperature of that slice at that location. We're going to assume that the entire slice is at one, or the entire differential element is at one temperature T. So that is what we've used in Newton's law of cooling there. And with that, uh, we can put the terms from the Taylor series expansion and Newton's law of cooling into the energy balance and we get the following. 
And so now I'm going to expand out the first term. So this here is the most general form of the Finn equation. And you could solve this numerically for fins of a complex shape. Uh, we want to be able to come up with analytic representations. So what we're now going to do is we're going to make some simplifying assumptions that enables us to clean this equation up a little bit. And the first one we are going to assume is that we're dealing with a fin of uniform cross-sectional area. And for a fin of uniform cross-sectional area, what that means is that we're dealing with a fin, looking at it from the side, it would be a fin that the cross-sectional area, AC, is not changing. And so it's a fin that we would say without taper. And with that, we can then say that DAC by DX is equal to zero. Another thing that we can say is that the wetted surface area is going to be equal to the perimeter. So let's say this was evaluated at x. It's going to be the perimeter times x, where p equals perimeter. And with that, DAS by DX is then simply equal to the perimeter of the fin, whatever the perimeter of our particular cross-sectional area might be for the fin. And so those are some simplifications that we can make. Uh, we can come back to the very general form of the equation, making those simplifications, and we get something that looks like this. Okay, so this is something that is looking a little better. It's looking like something that you may have seen in your ordinary differential equation course. And what we're going to do, we're going to make a substitution to simplify. And for our substitution, we're going to introduce this new variable called theta, which is a function of x. And all it is, it's the temperature of the fin at that x location minus the free stream convective cooling environment. And, and so it's basically just a temperature difference. If we look at our fin, remember we were solving, so this is x. What we're after is T of X. And then out here we have this fluid environment at T infinity. So that's just taking T at X minus T infinity and that goes into this new variable called theta. So when we make that substitution, now, another thing that we're going to do, when you're dealing with fins, quite often this HP over KAC comes up. So we're going to make another substitution. I'm going to call that little m squared. And it'll make sense in, in a few minutes why we did the little m squared. But anyways, that is what our equation is like. So what type of equation is this? Well, if you remember back to your ODE course, uh, we could say that this is a linear equation. Nothing is squared in there. We have no nonlinear terms. It is second order. And it is homogeneous due to the fact that the right-hand side is zero. So that's a differential equation. And if you look back in your ODE course, uh, you'll find solution techniques for that type of equation. And if you recall, for that type of equation, solutions of the form the exponential of ax, those should be solutions to that equation. So let's evaluate d theta by dx. And the second derivative and making substitutions now, canceling out this and that. What we're left with is a squared, and then we can solve for that.
and you can see the HP over KAC continues to appear here. And what we're going to do, we're going to bring back that M squared thing that I was talking about, that term. And with that, A is equal to plus or minus little m. Okay, so we have this uh, for our solution. Given that we had a is equal to plus or minus m, we can have the exponential of e to the mx or e to the minus x and linear combinations. So with that, so that's what we get out of the fin equation uh, for a fin without taper. We find that theta x can be expressed as two exponential functions where m is this hp over ak. I believe that's what we said it was, yeah, hp over kac. So what we're going to do in the next segment is we're going to try to determine what the boundary conditions are. And with those boundary conditions, we're then going to solve for C1 and C2. So that is, uh, we're partway through the derivation uh, for the temperature profile within a fin. And, and the other thing that we'll be working with is trying to figure out the amount of heat flux coming off the fin. Because if you recall, that's one of the main things that we're interested in is how much heat a fin removes from a surface. So that is the fin equation for a fin without taper.